In eukaryotic cells, membrane proteins have to be sorted between the organelles that are their final destination, or they have to go to the cell surface if they are, for example, cell surface receptors. And the researchers have asked for a long time, how are membrane proteins specifically recognized for transport to one of these destinations? Our paper now gives a new and surprising twist to the story in that it discovers, it describes a novel mechanism for protein sorting. You see, some of these transport signals are very well known. For example, for transport from the cis side of the Golgi apparatus back to the endoplasmic reticulum or ER, there is the so-called KKXX signal, the sequence of the KKXX amino acids in the cytosolic tail, and they lead to inclusion of a protein into COP1 vesicles that travel from the Golgi to the ER. But the most common route, really, in the secretory pathway is from the ER to the Golgi. All the proteins of the secretory pathway are folded in the ER and then some of them need to go to the Golgi apparatus. In fact, the majority, many proteins. So this happens in the so-called CUP2 vesicles that were discovered by Randy Sheckman. So how are proteins specifically taken up into these CUP2 vesicles? Well, there are a few, just a few, export signals on proteins known that travel from the ER to the Golgi, but those are very few signals and they are present on a few proteins only. So there is a lack of signals really. And our paper now shows that some proteins can become included into COP2 vesicles, not because of a sequence signal, but just because they can form oligomers. How did we do this? We made an artificial protein and we expressed it in yeast cells and we checked for its inclusion into COP2 vesicles by an in vitro budding or vesicle formation assay. Now this protein can be induced to form oligomers by the addition of an artificial drug. For the experts, this is the so-called FKBP system. Now, when the protein was oligomerized, we found that it became included into the COP2 vesicles with a much greater efficiency. That means that the formation of oligomers leads to the specific uptake into COP2 vesicles. That we found really quite exciting. Now, what is the molecular mechanism of this? Well, first we thought that it was because of a sequence signal in the cytosolic tail of our protein. Um, anything like maybe the KKXX signal. And we thought that this sequence signal, this cryptic sequence signal, was perhaps amplified or made, more st made stronger by its oligomerization. So we did a control experiment. We made a new um, artificial protein, this time without the cytosolic tail. And amazingly, we found that this effect the stronger inclusion upon oligomerization was still just the same. So it was not the sequence of the cytosolic tail, and that means that our protein did not interact with a COP2 code, and it was not specifically included as an oligomer because of this. Actually, the simplest explanation of our findings is that our protein deforms the ER membrane a little bit, and that when it when it is oligomerized, it deforms the ER membrane much more strongly. And as a result of that, the COP2 vesicles can form more easily in that region and our protein gets included into the COP2 vesicles. Let me explain this to you with a diagram. So here on this slide you can see nicely how we think that this works. You can see the ER membrane in yellow, now below it is the ER lumen and above it is the cytosol. And you can see three copies of our protein in blue. When we add the small drug, the protein will form an oligomer, here shown with three copies of the protein. And this oligomer somehow deforms the membrane of the ER, such that it bulges to the outside towards the cytosol. And that, of course, is just the kind of curvature that a COP2 vesicle needs to bud out from the ER. And this is why the inclusion of our proteins into a COP2 vesicle takes place. This is what we think. On the contrary, if the protein just stays on its own, as you can see on the left, it does not have the power by itself to deform the membrane. And so, 
it cannot become included into a COP2 vesicle, or at least this happens only at a very low efficiency. So this is the simplest explanation that we could come up with. And actually in the paper there is another very good piece of evidence, I think, for this hypothesis and that I leave up to you to discover for yourself when you read the paper. So thank you very much for your interest.